So I wanted to actually be able to show you how you typically use Spotwalla and the app. So in the previous part of the video, we went through and we actually showed you how you begin and end tracking. As I mentioned, we're right in the middle of the Texas snowmageddon here, and uh, I can't get out and actually make a trip. But while I was still finishing up the, the work on SW Tracker for um, the new release of Spotwalla, I was able, and I took a, a, a actually a long drive one day to my son's place from Dallas out to uh, El Paso where he's stationed. Anyway, so I've now logged in, if you look at the screen here on the right hand side, to a different account that I had set up previously during my testing time. I have an SW tracking device, and if you notice, I have 183 messages in the that the device has collected over the time that I had it created. If I click on it, you can actually see it. Um, lots of data. And if you notice, you'll see kind of real world data now that shows that I was driving at 75 miles an hour, 80 miles an hour. Yes, the roads out here in Texas, out in West Texas particularly, are 80 mile an hour roads. So I was not speeding. That was, um, actually I was going slower than a lot of people. <laughs> Anyway, so given that, I'm going to show you how you would use it. Um, the basic way of viewing your travel is through what they call a trip. Okay, and that's seen over here in the, in the uh, dashboard on the right-hand side. Now, a trip is basically a collection of data points that range from some starting date to some ending date that are displayed on a map. And to create a trip, you go here to the Trip Manager. Again, this is done on a website, not in the app. The app simply collects the points that will feed into the data that is a trip. So I'm going to go ahead and create a trip. Now, this is actually, you can create a trip before you actually travel or after you actually travel. It doesn't really matter. If it's created before, your friends can actually monitor you while you're on the trip. As your data comes in, uh, their screen will update and they get a fairly up to the minute uh, information where you are, up to the kind of the five minute uh, uh, enforced time limit between messages. So I'm gonna create a trip here and I'm gonna call it Denton, where I live, to El Paso. And I can put on, uh, you know, a secondary description. It doesn't really matter. Trip to see my son. Now, I do know that this happened on the 27th of January last month. So I'm going to click on the 27th. And I have to set a starting time and ending time. So the start time, I'm just going to put it at midnight there. It doesn't really matter because there was no other information coming in that date. But if you need to kind of bracket in closer, you can certainly do that. And my ending date, I'm going back to the 17th or 27th and taking it up to 11.59 p.m. The time zone of my device is Chicago. And I have to select the device that I want to be part of the trip. In my case, I have only the one device, but I still need to select it, okay? And I'm going to, you can, before I finish that, we can go up to security and we can make this uh, more private or not. Uh, if you have secure zone, which means areas that you don't want the trip to actually display, like around your home or something, uh, you can do that. You may want to hide some of the information, like how fast are you driving? Uh, that might be a good thing in some cases. Uh, whether or not this trip is public and is visible to other users without uh, your specific link or password. That's all doable here. And so I'm just going to leave it as it is and I'm going to create the trip. Okay. Now, I can either go out here. We're in the trip manager again. And this is where I can view the trip. I can change it, I can update it, or I can create a link to it that I can then post to somebody or send to a friend who wants to watch me. I'm going to go ahead and go back out now just to show you there are different ways to get at things. 
I'm going back to the dashboard. From the dashboard, the trip is visible that I just created, and I simply need to click on the trip, and it's going to go out and collect all the data. So in this case, you can see my trip starting up here in Denton, Texas, and driving all the way out to El Paso, Texas. It was a 10, 10 and a half hour trip. Now, if you zoom in, you'll see little arrow marks. These arrow marks are the five minute location messages. If you actually click on one of those, you'll see the information that is part of that location message. It includes my time zone, um, you know, what time it came in, the coordinates that it was at, the elevation, how fast. Uh, if you had chosen not to display this, the speed would not be visible. Uh, the bearing that you're going at that time, what the source was, this is my SW tracker device. Um, you'll also see some other kinds of messages. We haven't showed you those in the app, but we may do that in a bit. So there are custom messages and like this was a stop that I did at a gas station. So I sent a type of a gas message and I put down that, well, it was supposed to say shell oil, but it says shield oil. Oh, well. And then later on, we stopped for probably lunch. Yeah, it was 1225. So we stopped for lunch and we stopped at Whataburger for lunch. So there are several different custom message types that are available through Spotwalla. But this is the basic usage. Now, as I mentioned before, I've just created this after the fact. You can always go back and create a trip after the data has been collected. But if you create it prior to the data being corrected and you pass on this URL that you see up here, then people can watch your trip in semi real time. As the data comes in and their screen refreshes, they will have a fairly up to date view of where you are along your trip. I'm going to go back one more time. I'm going to the trip manager and do the same thing just one more time to let you know. I'm going to create a trip. And I had a, a much shorter trip around town here as I was developing the app. So I'm just going to call this testing. I don't need a description. You can do it. But this was on 125. So let's go back to January 25th. And ending is on January 25th as well. And I'll leave the time, starting time and date again the same. Select my device. And let's go ahead and take a quick look at that trip. And we'll do it from here this time. Just pull down, click view. And this just shows a trip where I was kind of running around different places a couple of different times. Um, now this shows you the lack of detail you get on short trips um, when you're only getting a, a mark every five minutes. When I traveled for 10 and a half hours across the country in the Denton to El Paso trip, you got a good view of where I was. This shows you that in this case, you know, these messages are coming every five minutes, but, you know, five minutes is at least five miles down the road, so you don't get a real close view. So let me show you something I haven't shown you yet in the app. We'll pull that up in just a second. But we have a way of creating what I call a, a track overlay. Um, Spotwala calls it a track. Now, I created a track at the time I started all of that traveling around locally for the testing. I'm going to click on that just to show you what the track looks like independent of the trip. And all of a sudden you see a, a much more accurate view of what happened. If you zoom in, for example, down here, you can see that the track is pretty closely following the contour of the road as it's gone. And then I took a trip up into Denton to stop at a grocery store. And I went several places that day, got the car washed. Um, but you notice instead of these few places every five minutes, you have a much more precise view of what the trip looked like. And this is what they call tracks in Spotwalla. I call track overlays because 
typically you will overlay this track on top of a trip. And what the track does when accessed through my app is it takes a, a, a spot in time much more often, but more importantly, as you drive, as you're moving, um, it's measuring the change in your direction as you drive. And after a few degrees, it determines that, well, you're turning. I need to kind of update your path so that uh, I give you a better view of following the road. And so that's, that's what I call adaptive tracking. And it's easily done. It's set up directly in the, in the app. Instead of setting up the trip that's in the, um, as you do it in the website, setting up these tracks is actually in this case done in the um, in the app so I'm going to go ahead and log in here and show you very quickly how you do that if you go under application setup you'll find on the third entry down is enable track overlay I'm going to tap that And in this particular case, I'm back logged into the demo account that has no tracks, so we don't see anything there. I'm going to say, go ahead and create a new track. So we'll do that. And if you notice down on the third thing that there is now a current track, by default, it has a name that is associated with the date and time that you've created it. So if we were to start tracking now, we would also have this track starting its more precise tracking. When you're done with that, you have to be very careful because there's no time and date stamps with a track. They're simply location points. They're in order, but should you stop for a period of time and start tracking a day later, you're gonna have a point between two days ago and when you just started now. So you just have to be a little bit careful. When you're done tracking with the overlay, you simply tap on it and it turns back to being disabled. Now, I'm gonna do it one more time just to show you. Now, in this case, if I enable tracks, it should say, hey, you've got a track here and show me my list of tracks. And there it is. So I can either now create a new track by tapping on create new at the top, or I can select the track that I'd started previously. Either way works. It just depends whether you want a new track or you want to continue on on a previous track. So let me show how you would use that now with respect to a trip. So I'm going back to Spotwalla. I'm going to go to my trip manager and I'm going to update. Oh, we're doing this one here. I'm going to update this trip. And now we can go over to track overlays. Come down here and I'm selecting the track overlay that was associated with that trip on 125. Update it. Now you can rename it here and I'll show you that should you want to do something like that. Again, I have tried to keep the name same as the date and time so you can maybe more easily associate it with a particular trip. So now when I go view the testing trip, it should overlay the track on top of the trip. And there it is. So the little arrows with the purple lines are the, the five minute track marks, while the blue indicates my real area of travel. Um, but in a much more precise way. And you can see that much more clearly as I get in here where I was traveling around on several different streets around this curving street here. I actually stopped up and got some lunch up here. <laughs> but anyway, you get the idea. So that's how you set that up. We can do the same thing very quickly. I'll go back to my trip manager. I did have a track that I did uh, I did record while making the trip out to El Paso. So I'm going to come in and update that trip. Select my track overlay that is associated with that trip. Update it. And now when I view that trip, I should see the track overlay on top of the trip. Here 
comes the basic trip and now you can see the track overlay. And as you see on a 10 hour trip they track much more precisely together but as we get in closely you can still see that there are times when the points every five minutes don't accurately reflect the actual travel. Well, sorry everyone, my last uh, video got interrupted a bit, but we were pretty much at the end as I was showing that uh, when you use the track overlay, you get a much more precise view. Anyway, I think actually that hits everything that I intended to show in this video. We've talked about creating trips, both before and after an actual travel, and then creating tracks and adding tracks to your trips. So that pretty much is the basic operation in a, in a nutshell. Log in, select your device. This has to generally happen only once. And then when you're ready to track, make sure from the main page you enable tracking. And when you're done, disable tracking by clicking on the same link. And that's, that's the basics of use. If you have any questions or would like me to do different videos that talk about other aspects of this, please let me know in the comments below. So until next time, take care, ride carefully, and have a great time.